Can you give us a brief intro about yourself and about what you do at Aptos Lab? Absolutely. So, Salman Tesfai, Chief Business Officer at Aptos. I joined Aptos a little over a year ago. Mm -hmm. I joined as the Head of Capital Markets um, person and then basically transitioned over to Chief Business Officer as we started to double down on financial services, specifically trading, money movement, data, yeah. and infrastructure on chain. Um, so, what I really focus on is I primarily lead the partnerships team, the investor relations team, and a lot of the ancillary business operations. And then background, I was at T0 before. So if you're less familiar with T0, T0 operates a number of broker dealers in the US. Um, they were one of the early entrants into RBUAs before it was called RBUAs. It was called you know, DSOs, STOs, ICOs, a lot of <laughs> acronyms over the years. Um, so did a lot of the early tokenization of equity, fixed income, a lot of different products all over the world. Um, and then before that, I was in traditional investment banking. So I was okay. in Citigroup, um, before that venture capital, I had a number of leadership roles and operations, mm -hmm. and then some modest entrepreneurship before that. Oh, okay. Well, great. So you mentioned you just uh, stepped as, uh, into the role of chief business officer. Mm -hmm. um, how, how did things get different, or how did your vision differ from when you were leaving the, leaving the capital markets? So really, we realized that when I was focused on capital markets, mm -hmm. uh, really, it started to touch everything. It started to touch all the different verticals, whether you were doing a deal in gaming all the way to you know just something that's more pure play financial services such as what BlackRock's doing with their money market fund mm -hmm. or even more esoteric things like Lotte is doing uh, vouchers that are tokenized on Aptos okay. they've done 5 million mm -hmm. vouchers that have been basically sold to uh, 1.3 million users just just over the last three months yeah. but they're viewing that as now an RWA as well because yeah. they're prepaid vouchers they want to set up trading environments so once we realized that basically capital markets started to permeate all these other industry verticals. Mm -hmm. It just made sense for me to zoom out to a much more meaningful degree. And our CEO, Avery, um, also was seeing the same trend mm -hmm. and was very much aligned. Also, when you think of a lot of the Aptos-linked traditional products, mm -hmm. you're starting to see a lot of like Aptos ETPs, exchange-traded products, yeah. or we're actively pursuing an Aptos uh, ETF mm -hmm. with our friends at Bitwise Asset Management. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these efforts are very financial services oriented. Okay. Um, so my role just basically expanded in terms of breadth. Just business in general. <laughs> that, that that's right, Bus business in general. <laughs> Anything that has to do with business. So, from what I know, Aptos now hosts over 5 million, 500 million in tokenized real world assets. Uh, which categories are scaling the fastest and what's next? So, that's actually a stale number. We actually have 720 million oh, wow. now. So, okay. the pace is, is quickening. Yes. Um, it's mostly that's... fueled by private credit and money market funds, which okay. is consistent with the broader mm -hmm. RWA real world asset mm -hmm. space. Um, and so, we're very, very excited about basically pursuing diversify, diversification of assets. Okay. So we were looking to actively pursue um, public equity, which you know, probably, you know, I'm giving some alpha here, but you know, <laughs> be, on the, be on the lookout for that. And then okay. also we'll be pursuing you know, commodities and a number of other things on chain, just to make sure that once capital comes on chain with Aptos, mm -hmm. you have places that you could deploy it, depending on if you're looking for yield or diversification of Are product. you guys looking into treasury? Yes, yeah, so we, uh, we offer, have a BlackRock Spittle Fund, which is mm -hmm. a money market fund that holds mostly treasuries okay. and uh, cash and cash equivalent. We have. Mm -hmm. Uh, Franklin Templeton, uh, mm -hmm. their money market fund, same mm -hmm. same thing. Um, so we're actively going to support any of those higher profile money market funds. Okay, stablecoin. So stablecoin activities on Aptos exceeded 70 billion monthly? Correct, or last that, month. Yep. So that's good, okay. Yep, absolutely. So I'm up to date. You're up to date with that number. <laughs> uh, do you see Aptos as more institution settlement or a consumer platform settlement, a payment platform? I don't really think we have to um, pick one or the other. Okay. I think I think when it comes to money movement, we want to be able to you know, service uh, folks that are looking to do payments and remittance amongst family members or whether we're looking to do large, you know, B2B transactions um, on the institutional side. Um, so at the end of the day, they just need a fast, low cost, you know, high performing blockchain that's, you know, consistent, um, that has no, no downtime and so forth. So they look for the similarities in terms of what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so we look forward to servicing both. Right now we're seeing a lot of the stablecoin momentum, yeah. the volume you're mentioning, driven by trading mm -hmm. and payments. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to continue to focus on remittance, microfinancing, any of those cross-border mm -hmm. transactions, because the legacy systems, that's where there's a lot of pain points. I yeah. mean, um, we're actually, we're really focus on real world applications so we think we can actually add a meaningful amount of value on that side. Why should users or merchants care about PYUSD? Uh, that PYUSD is live. Yeah, so whenever we support any of these um, different applications like mm -hmm. PYUSD or any of the other enterprise grade uh, uh, basically stable coins, mm -hmm. it basically gives us greater 
distribution. Okay. And then they're looking for the same qualities that Aptos is known for, mm -hmm. speed, low cost, and uh, basically you know, uh, guaranteed execution, high performance. Mm -hmm. And so really, um, they can look at it as now we have basically institutional distribution through PayPal mm -hmm. um, as different merchants and so forth want to utilize um, you know, PayPal in some capacity, they'll have the option to basically move mm -hmm. their capital um, on chain on Aptos. Mm -hmm. If you may, um, can you tell us a little bit about what you guys have experienced until when it comes to compliance before and after the Genius Act? I think it's really just more regulated counterparties are able okay. to lean into the conversations okay. with uh, you know uncertainty around regulation. Mm -hmm. Typically, will uh, make a lot of the institutions, especially like the the banks, the ones that are broker dealers or have some type of licensing, like a money transmission okay. license or whatever the case may be, very hesitant to engage in a more meaningful capacity. Sure, they may do a POC with you, a pilot, something along those right. lines. But for them to really invest in it um, and then manage their own risk and liability and have foresight whether there's actually this is something they could scale mm. um, they do need you know clarity whether it be the clarity act whether it be the genius act they need that type of um, you know line of sight mm -hmm. and then also it acts as a catalyst for all the other geographies because the u.s naturally is the biggest market mm -hmm. so it also speeds up legislation in other environments as exactly. they try to keep up yeah, same in korea i think we have uh, after the passing of the genius act um, i think we have seen the sort of the sentiment uh, in korea has changed dramatically mm -hmm. and and sort of like okay we need to do it this quicker absolutely uh, yeah. um, i think that's the, you're in korea blockchain week right now um, talk about korea um, so I know Lotte's De Hong subsidiary has already tokenized, I think you said 5 million plus? They've, they've sold uh, vouchers 5 million vouchers. On Aptos? Um, correct. 5 million vouchers over the last three months to oh. 1.3 million users, oh. and they only intend on scaling that. So it started, okay. started with this voucher program, which is already a massive program in itself, mm -hmm. as they roll it out formally across the whole voucher program. Mm -hmm. But as you know, Lotte is a conglomerate. They have so many other different business lines. And so they're looking at this holistically in terms of really expanding the relationship. As Korea gets more line of sight to stay stablecoin legislation. That's another area on the stablecoin side that we plan on really working with them closely across their full business. Mm -hmm. um, but um, that, we have a very close relationship with that particular firm. Can you maybe explain a little bit more about what you have experienced um, basically onboarding mainstream users, uh, especially away from US and Korea uh, on Aptos and maybe some uh, some of the things you had to go through, explain what you had to do in the, at the business level. Yeah, so the, the nice thing is when you think about the history of Aptos, you know, mm -hmm. stemming from Meta's DM and Libra program, it was actually built for this purpose. It was built at the time for the billions of users that, you know, Meta, of course, supports. Um, so it actually was, you know, quite seamless. Naturally, there's always some learning curve and so forth, which we were talking about mm -hmm. before we kind of kick things off here. Yeah. Uh, but setting that aside, Aptos was built for institutional grade use cases. Okay. So it was actually, that's also why the relationships with all these different institutions work out so well, mm -hmm. is they're looking for that basically plug and play, ones that are not necessarily you know, aspiring to support a visa, a visa level transactions. Well, they want to go to a chain that already can support all the credit card transactions yeah, in the world. Yeah. And so um, it's actually been a, a great experience across the board for both, both parties. So beyond Lotus uh, partnership, uh, which industries in Korea do you expect the, to be the next frontier for, uh, for Aptos and for your partnerships? So I, I, I do think just because Korea is so unique where there's such a strong retail participation in uh, crypto. I was looking at one of the stats. They said between 60 to like 69, 25% um, of Koreans yeah. hold crypto, which is like unbelievable. More like 30%. No. Uh, maybe, <laughs> my numbers probably are still. <laughs> and so in general, with, with that, I do think there's gonna be a lot more retail oriented products yeah. versus other markets like maybe like a Japan that would be more focused on institutions, basically fractionalizing like different, different things on their balance sheet and then selling them to other institutions and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, so I do think that there'll be more retail oriented products. I also think there will be uh, more esoteric products like vouchers that are now being categorized as assets mm -hmm. because they are going for a more retail audience as opposed to just offering very traditional you know, traditional products mm -hmm. on chain. Um, that will still exist. But I do think that Korea is just because uh, the audience is more in tune with blockchain and there's less of a, a learning curve. So I, I think really it's going to come down to uh, probably media, okay. IP. Okay. Um, I think really a lot like a lot of those consumer like businesses. Mm -hmm. And then I do think that of course you'll still start to see like the institutional side such as like I think of course BlackRock, the Biddle Fund and all these other things will be offered here but for retail specifically I think it's mostly going to be consumer media and IP that are going to okay. drive everything forward. So um, you're leading 
Aptos Ascent. Uh, through Aptos Ascent, you're working with Microsoft mm. and Brevin Howard and BCG. Yes, yeah, so. Um, what concrete use cases or products uh, will we see in the next few months or 12 months? Yeah, so right now, um, we, don't, we, don't, we don't call it Aptos Ascend anymore, but in general, we have the same initiative because we yeah. realized that we didn't need to carve out mm -hmm. Aptos's financial services into okay. a specific division because it touches everything, okay. right? But um, to answer your question, we have a very close relationship with uh, BCG just because BCG's only endorsed one blockchain publicly, yes. and that's Aptos. So we do a lot of co-pitching, for example, mm -hmm. alongside BCG to different clients that are looking to utilize blockchain mm -hmm. um, and then in terms of Brevin Howard yeah, we work very closely with Brevin Howard in a, in a number of different capacities mostly focused on RUAs mm -hmm. and then um, we also have a great relationship with uh, with Microsoft and we're looking to expand that um, in a much more meaningful capacity uh, but really we, we really took it taken Aptos Ascend and expanded it across all the business lines so any industry vertical that we engage with now we're looking at it from a financial services lens okay so uh, coming back to the question is there any concrete use cases you we can expect to see yes yeah, so you can start to see actual different products, whether they're issued by Brevin Howard, whether they're issued by Hamilton Lane, whether oh, they're issued by any of these different counterparties. Products. So you'll see financial products that are being put on chain with okay. those particular counterparties. So looking two, three years ahead, I think that's forever in the blockchain market. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what role do you think will Aptos play in the global finance? Uh, more back-end rails or consumer-facing experiences? So really when you think of blockchain, at least how we think of blockchain, mm. is it should be abstracted, yeah. right? When I go on a website, mm. you know, I don't care if it's coded in PHP <laughs> or Ruby on Rails. I, if I'm on Amazon, I just want my package in yes. a couple days, right? So it's going to be inherently abstracted out. Mm. Um, it's Another analogy is like electronic trading. You know, it's abstracted out, right? Mm. And so we do believe it's going to be in the background. Mm. Um, and then in terms of uh, use cases, I think the leading indicator we, we view is like money movement, so volume. Okay. Is it something that we look at? Stablecoin volume is something okay. we look at. And as capital comes on chain, it's going to look to be deployed into whether it be yield oriented products or whether it be into um, products that they're just looking to get exposure to on chain that they otherwise would have to take the capital off chain to get access to, whether it be real estate or fixed income or whatever the case may be. Um, so really, I think uh, you're, when you think of Aptos, you're gonna think of money movement and just commerce on chain. We're really trying to build oh. a on-chain economy, if you will, okay. that promotes commerce of any kind. Yeah, and also, once you deploy your capital into these particular assets, we want to also allow you to do a lot more than the traditional markets could do. Use that position to actually get some utility out of it. Use it as collateral. Oh, okay. uh, have it to be enter DeFi for certain products, some okay. some derivatives, enter DeFi and actually get a higher yield and things along those lines. So we're looking further downstream. Okay. So if you have to pick one metric uh, to judge after success in the next, say, next year, uh, what would it be? It's really going to be, I'm going to have to do two. Okay. Um, two really, metrics. it's going to be like capital. Mm -hmm. uh, or assets on chain. Mm -hmm. So whether that's like, you know, whether you look at RWAs and, and then TVL, basically mm -hmm. you add those together, that's just capital within our environment and then volume. Mm -hmm. And we say volume as well, or when it comes to like stable coin, because yeah. we don't want it just to sit there. Sure. We want the capital to actually be put to work. Mm -hmm. And so we really pay a lot of attention to um, stablecoin volume even more than we pay attention to mm -hmm. TVL. Of course, we have over a billion of TVL, but it, really that, that 68 billion mm -hmm. of stablecoin volume is a number we're actually even more proud of as we see the capital actually you know, circulating okay. in our environment. Yeah. So lastly, um, do you have a message now that you're in Korea's blockchain week uh, to our Korean uh, viewers about Aptos? Well, one, we're doubling down on Korea. So expect, to, expect to see a lot of us um, <laughs> all over Korea. Um, and so we're very, very excited about the market. Um, and then also uh, expect us to be, you know, louder, we've been executing in the background, but we anticipate being much, much louder on a go forward basis, mm -hmm. uh, and making sure that um, you know, the public really knows what we, we're doing. These are fundamentals have never looked better, mm -hmm. but we do we do are, wanna be proactive around making sure that the market knows um, all we're doing in the background and so forth. So excited, excited about the market, and excited about the, the outlook.